What's going on, guys, and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Uh, I just want to go ahead and say, yes, I know I missed like an entire week of the Crack a Pack episode. I do apologize. Honestly, I kind of just took some time off of making videos for a little bit. Uh, I don't have a reason. Uh, I know this week is a holiday week, so it makes sense to take this one off, but I didn't. Uh, I took last week off, so I apologize. We didn't have any episodes up, but we are back, and I'm very, very excited to be back. And I'm very excited to be opening a pack of new Phyrexia today. So I've talked about this pack a lot, uh, or excuse me, this set a lot, uh, as being one of my favorites to open. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One, of course, there are just some really awesome cards in here. Straight up, there's some amazing things you can pull. Uh, but not only that, there's amazing like common and uncommon cards that you can pull out of this set, which makes it fun to open. Even if you miss on like the crazy bomb rare, chances are you're going to open something awesome. So I actually really love opening this set. Uh, and so we are going to go through this uh, very excitedly as a pack one pick one scenario. Uh, so we will be uh, going through every single card and hopefully figuring out what our pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set. So, uh, and here, perfect example. So we start off with Gataxian Probe, which is banned now in a number of formats for good reason. Uh, but it is a sorcery for one Phyrexian blue mana. So what that means is, uh, this is obviously set specific mechanics, but uh, it can be paid with either blue as your, your normal blue mana or two life. Uh, now what that means is, and what we found in Constructed, is that you can essentially play this for free by paying two life, uh, which is a little too good. So it just enables a lot of things uh, in Constructed, uh, which is why it's been banned. But uh, it also gives you information because you get to look at target player's hand, and then you also get to replace it by drawing a card. So there's a lot of upside on this card, and for only two life most of the time, uh, it basically is a freebie. Uh, it's kind of amazing how much you can do with a card like this, being able to pull that information, replace itself, dig you into your uh, really, really important key pieces into your deck is hugely powerful. Uh, looking at it from a limited perspective, it's still quite good, but it's only as good as the next card in your deck. Uh, and so to keep this in perspective, the next card in your deck is not going to be some well-constructed combo most of the time uh, if you're just drafting this set. And so it is good. It's not quite as good uh, as you would see it in Constructed for sure. Uh, you still do get quite a good bit of information on this, uh, which I love. Uh, upside, it can also kind of just go into any deck uh, because it, it can be paid for just two life, which is very nice as well. So it's a very flexible cantrip, and I love that. Uh, I don't want to harp on it too long because it is just a cantrip, but it is a very powerful one. Gives you that information and can be splashed in any color. Lots of really, really good upside to something like this. So worth noting that it is a very, very powerful uh, cantrip, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Ruthless Invasion is three and then one red Phyrexian mana. Same thing, you can pay either red or two life, and we'll, I'm sure, see that as we go through uh, on a number of other cards, but uh, it is a sorcery. Non-artifact creatures can't block this turn, so uh, don't love this card, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, New Phyrexia, if I'm not mistaken, has quite a high number of artifacts in it, uh, but on top of that, it's very much uh, kind of... It's a little bit counterintuitive, so it is an aggro enabler, uh, but it's not a creature or anything like that, which means it's not actually attacking him for itself, it's just enabling you to attack with whatever you've already got on the field. Uh, what's nice is you can play this on turn three without any ramp by just paying three of any color and then two life, which is nice. Uh, it's a little bit flexible, but... I don't love a card like this. I'd rather have the aggro pieces and then maybe consider a card like this mid to late pack before picking up something like this right off the bat. Uh, Viridian Betrayers is a 3-1 for 1 and 2 green, and it has Infect as long as an opponent is already poisoned. So uh, if you don't know what Infect is, it's a really powerful mechanic. Uh, it deals damage to creatures in the form of negative 1, negative 1 counters, and then to players in the form of poison counters, not just regular life damage. So... Uh, what that means is the damage sticks around on the creatures, which is really cool. Uh, even your chump blockers now have a little bit of extra value if they do have infect, which is great. Uh, and then if you can deal damage to the opponent, you only need 10 poison counters to actually dis th till the opponent loses the game. Uh, essentially, it, if you're dealing infect damage, their life total becomes 10. 
Uh, as soon as they get 10 of those poison counters, they do lose the game. Uh, and so Infect is basically a much shorter clock uh, than it would normally be in like a, a life, a 20 point life swing. So uh, really powerful. I don't love this card in particular. Uh, it dies very, very easily at that one toughness. Uh, it is a little expensive for a 3-1 in my opinion. The Infect is nice, don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's conditional Infect. You don't necessarily have it right off the bat. Uh, and if you don't, which early game, uh, you may not have uh, dealt uh, infect damage to the opponent yet. They may not have that poison counter. In which case, this is literally just a 3-1 for 3. Uh, and that's a little bit tough. I don't love that as much. Getaxian Probe leaves you much more open. It's a very non-committal kind of card. Uh, but I would say lean towards, cre lean towards creatures normally. But I think in this case, I'm going to go for the Probe over this. Ooh, here we go. Vault Scourge uh, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and then 1 black Phyrexian mana. It has flying and it has lifelink. So uh, lots of really, really high upside on this card, in my opinion. Uh, first of all, it is a 1-1 one, one flyer for essentially 1. You can pay just 1 and 2 life uh, and get this out very, very early. On top of that, it has lifelink, which means it's going to start gaining you back a little bit of life every single turn pretty early on as well. Uh, so honestly, really, really high upside on a card like this uh, encourages that aggro strategy and again, fits into any color. Uh, you can play this in a non-black deck and be perfectly fine. So uh, I actually really like this. I do think this is better than Probe, uh, especially in draft. So I'm going to go for this so far. Uh, remember the Fallen is a sorcery for two and a white. Choose one or both. Uh, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand and or return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is a the type of effect that I always like to have a one of. It's generally a black uh, color centric uh, kind of card. Uh, we see it on like Macabre Waltz, I believe, and a number of, you know, just raised dead kind of effects. Uh, and it is very powerful to be able to bring back your bomb or some crazy artifact in this case, or both, uh, and be able to make your opponent have to have two answers essentially for that single card. That just really, really adds value to all of your cards, which is great. Uh, that being said, I don't like taking them early. I, I don't think that this is the kind of card that pushes you to be in a particular color. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't think it's worth first picking. However, if you find yourself in white, and especially if you find yourself in an artifact uh, focus deck, but really either way, uh, this is very, very strong. I do think this is a very good card to pick up. Uh, Blind Zealot is a 2-2 two -two for one and two black. Uh, it does have Intimidate, so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So uh, black creatures and artifact creatures are the only creatures that can block this. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it. And then if you do distort, destroy, excuse me, target player, or target creature, excuse me, that player controls. Uh, very powerful card in my opinion. So uh, not only is this semi unblockable, it just has that good evasion. Uh, but on top of that, it's just gonna be a really strong removal spell whenever you need it to be. Uh, it also gets a huge target on its back for the opponent's removal and it doesn't feel good to remove a 2-2. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say that. So I actually really like this card, I think. It's a little bit tough because the Vault Scourge is a very, like, leave yourself open kind of card, and I love that. Uh, but Blind Zealot does seem quite good. I think I'm going to go with that for now, uh, and we'll see what we get through the rest of the pack. Uh, Mutagenic Growth is an instant for one green for Axiom Mana. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Uh, what's really, really nice about this is obviously it's just a solid combat trick. Even at one green, it's perfectly fine. On top of that, you don't actually have to leave up mana to play this. Uh, you can just play this for two life. Uh, and so you can really, really surprise uh, an opponent with a card like this. I love it. Definitely worth playing. However, it is just a combat trick, not something I'm looking to pick this early in the pack. Uh, it is something if I was in really any color because it's just a good free combat trick, essentially, uh, you can kind of pull this in as if you're if you're lacking in that area. But uh, in general, uh, definitely something I'm looking to pick up kind of later in the pack. Uh, Gremlin Mind is an art mind, excuse me, is an artifact for one of any color. You can pay one, tap it, and sacrifice it, and it deals four damage to target artifact creature. Uh, you can also pay one, tap it, sack it, remove up to four charge counters from target non -ar non creature artifact. Uh, this is not one of my favorite cards. It does deal very well with artifact creatures, which I think is worth noting. But I think it depends. 
the matchup, uh, which means you kind of want to sideboard a card like this. I don't think it's worth mainboarding necessarily. There are a decent number of artifacts in this set, like I said earlier, but it's not uh, it's not like a, a Mirrodin set or anything like that where basically every creature is. Uh, and so it's not to that level, which means I don't think this is quite playable main deck. I could be wrong. Again, I didn't draft during this time, but uh, I definitely think we've got some better options so far. Uh, Porcelain Legionnaire is a 3-1 for 2 and a white Phyrexian mana, uh, and it does have First Strike, so I actually really like this card. Uh, this actually gets played in like Legacy Cube pretty regularly, uh, because it, one, fits into any deck, of course, as we've talked about, but that First Strike is really key, so obviously it dies pretty easily to burn and things like that, but it does not die easily to blocking or attacking creatures. Uh, it deals really, really well. Uh, with being able to punch through that damage because of that first strike and not only that but you get it out ideally on turn two because you can just pay two life for that third mana uh, and so you can really get in for a lot of damage very very quickly I kind of think this might be the pick over the blind zealot uh, blind zealot very very good don't get me wrong uh, but uh, that first strike seems really really key in my opinion uh, thundering tanadon uh, is a 5-4 uh, for 4 and 2 green Phyrexian mana, uh, and it does have Trample. Uh, and again, this is one of those cards that's like okay to splash into any deck uh, because it just serves as decent top end. Uh, it's not amazing in my opinion. Uh, you do have to pay a lot of life if you're planning to play this super early, uh, which I don't love. The Trample is nice though, I will say that. You can get around a lot of uh, just low ground creatures which tends to be where a lot of these decks go, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, because you get a lot of infect and things like that, it's really easy for people to go low and very, very fast if they can. Uh, and so if they do, it's very nice to be able to trample over those creatures as best you can. You do have to worry about infect. It's going to be able to stack up and deal a lot of damage to this over time, which just means long term, chump blockers will kill this uh, over time, which kind of sucks. But uh, you can punch through some damage with it. I don't think it's a good bomb, uh, and it's definitely not the pick here so far, uh, but it is worth noting you can put this into any deck, which is kind of nice. Uh, our first uncommon is Arm with Aether. Uh, it's a sorcery for two and a blue. Until the, uh, until the end of the turn, creatures you control game, whenever this creature deals combat damage to an opponent, you may return target creature that player controls to its owner's hand. Uh... You know, that's a really powerful ability. However, it is on a sorcery, which means the opponent's going to be able to know about it before the combat step, which means they will be able to respond. Uh, that being said, what you're hopefully able to do uh, is wait for them to tap out or do something really powerful, and then you play this and ideally really, really blow them back. Uh, I think that's a high-risk, high-reward strategy, though, I will say. I think uh, the Porcelain Legionnaire is a little bit more of just a solid pick. Uh, this is very, very good in certain situations, for sure. Uh, in a losing situation, you can really get ahead of your opponent by bouncing a lot of their things. Uh, in a winning position, you can really get very, very far ahead or, or, or uh, pull very far ahead uh, by bouncing a lot of their stuff and just setting them back a couple turns. Uh, and so that is very, very powerful. I do think that's a good effect, but I have to go with the Legionnaire here. I don't know if that's 100% the correct pick. Feel free, of course, to let me know in the comment section, but uh, I think that that Legionnaire is just a little bit more of a solid pick. Uh, Caress of Phyrexia is a sorcery for three and two black. Target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters. Uh, very, very powerful card for sure. There's Without a doubt, for five mana, you're doing quite a lot. Uh, that being said, I don't know if I super love this. Uh, sorry for the focus, by the way. I believe it's getting... A, there we go. Uh, I... <sighs> I don't know if I love this card solely because so uh, in some instances it's very nice because you can actually just kill an opponent with a card like this. I just want to point that out. Uh, dealing three damage and lose or, or giving somebody three poison counters can very easily mean you win the game. Uh, that being said, it's also nice to draw those three cards. So maybe that's something you use on yourself depending on the situation and the state of the game. I think this is one of those cards that is again very high risk, high reward. And I don't think that's bad. I think it's a good card. I don't know if it's the right pick or not. Uh, I'm going to keep it with the Legionnaire. We'll we'll see. Uh, I like it because it is kind of just good on its own. 
Uh, and I think that's really, really worth noting. You really need cards like the, like individual value cards uh, to be able to push a draft deck forward. So I do like a card like this. I don't know if it's better than the Legionnaire. We'll we'll see what the rest of the pack holds. Ooh, ooh, hoo, hoo. dismember. I love this card. So it's an instant for one and two black Phyrexian mana. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until the end of the turn. That is very, very strong. I just want to point that out. Uh, that deals with so many things at instant speed, and you can technically only have to pay one mana to play this. I just want to point that out. You do have to pay for life. Uh, however, in some games, especially if you're up against an infect player, your life total really doesn't matter that much because they're dealing damage to you in the form of poison counters, not life. Uh, and so you can actually afford to lose some of that life. So not saying there's a ton of like that's always going to be the case you do have to play to whatever the opponent is playing uh, play to their deck for sure uh, but this is a very strong card i kind of think this is the pick at this point uh, just because it is such a strong removal piece it deals with so many things very very strong definitely like this card here Ooh, and our rare is Birthing Pod. So, very cool card. Uh, took over Modern for quite a while. Uh, it's an artifact for three and a green uh, Phyrexian mana. And you can pay one and a green Phyrexian mana, tap it, and sacrifice a creature. Uh, when you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Uh, you can only do that as a sorcery, so it is only on your turn. But uh, essentially what this allows you to do is kind of move up the chain for, for basically free, I will say. Uh, it's not technically free, of course, but uh, you get to move up the chain as far as CMC goes uh, and just dealing or, or getting stronger and stronger creatures out. Uh, and so you can find yourself in situations where you're just ramping, 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 and you're almost always guaranteed to get another really good card on the next turn. As long as, this is the caveat, as long as your opponent doesn't have a dismember uh, or some kind of piece of removal. And that's kind of the downfall. Not only that, but you really have to build the deck around Birthing Pod. Uh, and while that's not a bad thing, uh, it's a very high risk, high reward thing. We've said that multiple times in this pack, but uh, the reality is, if you're if you've got a lot of one drops, a few or excuse me, a few one drops, a good number of two drops, good number of three drops, no four drops, and then you know a couple fives or a six, you're looking at a broken chain, which just means Birthing Pod isn't going to be able to move you up into your deck once you get to that that missing piece, once you get to that three drop slot. You don't have a four drop to go to. Uh, and so that's actually a really key point to this card is that you have to have that chain and you have to have them in your deck. They cannot be in your hand when this card, when you utilize this card. So there's a lot to think about. This turns into a very strong build around card if you can make it work. However, I tend to leave myself a little more open uh, if I can. Birthing Pod, really, really good constructed card when you can make it work there, but draft is a lot harder. So I don't love it there. Uh, we do have our poison counter and our island. I honestly think the pick is dismember. Uh, it's just very, very solid premium removal, in my opinion. Uh, we did have a lot of really good cards, and you can see why I love opening these packs so much. There's just so much good stuff throughout every card slot. I love it. So dismember is my pick. Please feel free to, dis uh, to disagree in the comment section below. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.